All right, all. Welcome back. We're now going into chapter nine, which is uh, surprisingly dense as far as the uh, calculations are concerned, simply because we're dealing with wave equation and what waves are. So let's start out by uh, talking about the wave equation. In particular, our statement wants to know, by explicit differentiation, check that functions f1, f2, f3 in the text satisfy the wave equations and show that f4 and f5 do not. All right, so what we know is the classical wave equation, the ones you would find in a PDE course, um, which differ slightly from the wave equation we see in quantum mechanics, hence classical, um, in one dimension is uh, partial squared f uh, over partial squared z is equal to 1 over v squared d squared f over dt squared. So we see that we have a time dependency on the right-hand side and a positional dependency on the left-hand side. And it's if you note, the 1 over v takes to the characteristic of what is uh, the propagation speed of the wave. So it all tidies together quite nice. Though dealing with these in a PDE course is a little more rigorous than what we'll deal with here. Nonetheless, for uh, the functions, though, we have a and b are constant. Um, and as you see, the text gives us five different functions. And our goal is to see if these functions satisfy the wave equation or not. Um, one thing to note that one thing that would be a possible thing to note is the periodicity of the functions as well. So let's go ahead and check it out. So uh, just straight up plug and chug. So for equation one, uh, we have to take the double derivative. And this is just a uh, exponential, so easy to deal with there. You know, just chain rule and be careful with the chain rule. After one derivative, we have a product rule on the left-hand side, so be careful. And then similarly, we have a product rule on the right-hand side after one derivative. But after you simplify it down, you see that they do indeed satisfy. The left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. The thing about exponentials is they're easy to deal with, and the square keeps things together as far as um, the signage, so good to go there. As you might imagine, the next one dealing with the sine function will also tend to work out quite nice. As you see, it's a pretty quick and easy computation with the chain rule. No big deal, in my opinion, uh, but as you would imagine, sine waves and cosines tend to do very well with the wave equation. Not really a shocker there. Um, now this third function, which is a reciprocal function, is kind of a bit weird, but uh, just again, be careful with the computation and algebra. Uh, you see that the two uh, product, or I guess quotient rules, um, tend to be equal, not tend, but are equal, even though the calculations are messy. But uh. Yeah, all those work. And if you notice, they all kind of have a square or they're kind of even in some respect or the they have some periodic nature in the double derivative, such as the sine. So we're good there. Um, now we see that for F4, where we have uh, Z squared, it doesn't work. And you see that the Z squared gives us an extra factor that we don't have on the right-hand side. And that's what causes the product rule on the left-hand side and thus not working. So that's not a good solution. And then we see we have a product of a sine and cosine uh, cubed. Again, not looking real good as far as symmetry or periodicity is concerned because of that cube. And so, as you might imagine, it simply doesn't work out. Um, the sine goes to cosine. And then uh, on the right-hand side, we see that the cosine being a function of t with the cube in it just doesn't quite work out. So that product rule, not going to work. Um, but, you know, this, 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 equ this question is not complicated. It's just a matter of equations and computing, yeah, computation. So if you don't remember your derivatives, there you go. But easy starter.